Hello, everyone. I'm Ned Damon, Principal Data Scientist here at DAT. I'm joined by Ken Adamo, our Chief of Analytics, for our weekly market update. Uh, Ken's just gotten out of the dentist chair, or so he claims, so his speech is going to be a little slurred. I'll let you be the judge of exactly what the source of that is. So you're going to be hearing a little bit more of my uh, melodious voice uh, this particular week. I hope everybody enjoyed the long holiday weekend. Um, we've got a uh, Bunch of exciting information for you this week. And uh, next week, we're going to have a very special guest. So uh, I think that'll be quite nice. So uh, let's, without further ado, get into the specifics of what we're talking about this week. We're going to start off with market dynamics, talking about the load to truck ratios, which are back in the trend with 2019 levels, which, you know, is nice. I'll take it. Uh, Great Lakes is heating up for reefers, both uh, physically in terms of the temperature and also um, in terms of the, the market conditions value for those regions. Uh, dry spot van rates have caught back up to 2019 and reefers have kept momentum, meaning that rates are on trend to get out of the hole, which I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm quite happy about. And then uh, forecast models are continuing to show optimism in the near term, although there's some split on to the level of optimism that the particular models are showing. So uh, that's about it for the high level. And now we're going to go into market dynamics with Ken. All right. Thanks, Ned. I'm going to try to battle through here. And again, I apologize if uh, it sounds like I had too many mimosas this morning. Uh, so starting off with the dry van load board activity, th this is the second week in a row where we've seen the load to truck ratios fall in line with 2019, which I think is a good thing. And it, it points towards recovery. Now, 2019, as we know, was a down year for freight. So we were hoping to see some elevated levels. But I think given where we've came from with the COVID-related depression in load to truck ratios, we're kind of happy to be on even footing. If we pivot to reefers really quick, this is a way we can see kind of the similar trend developing. Um, and we're starting to keep pace with that upward hockey stick that we've talked about in weeks prior. It'll be very important to monitor over the next couple of weeks to see if we can keep pace with 19. And hopefully, you know, if you're an optimist, uh, really see us take off and maybe short shoot up towards um, higher levels. Um, looking at dry van MCI, this is a snapshot from yesterday. A lot of the residual heat that we've talked about in prior weeks remains. Now, these numbers are going to be a little wonky due to the Memorial Day holiday. I know a lot of folks, myself included, uh, took advantage and maybe had a four week, four day uh, weekend. So, you know, some of the data um, will reflect that both in the rates, volumes, and market conditions data. But again, you can see the Southeast, the upper Midwest, and Southern California all showing heat. Flip the reefers really quick. There's an interesting trend. So I live in Ohio. Um, it's been in the high 80s, pushing 90 for the better part of a week. And that's been a trend across most of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. And what, what happens there is a lot of produce, like, or not, doesn't have to just be produce, things that kind of typically would have to be kept from that extreme heat. Um, when it's cooler out in early spring can sometimes move on a dry van, but when the temperatures spike up, what you'll see is they have, they're forced to go to a reefer. And that's why we're seeing on the reefer side, um, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, even some of parts of Indiana showing extreme heat along with your typical produce areas for this time of year in the Southeast, uh, Southern Texas and uh, the Southwest. Um, I'm going to flip forward and show how that's translating to rates because we have some really good news to share there and jump right into dry van rates. So we've really broken away from that 2016 level or that trough we were following. We're sitting at a point now where we're right about where we were last year at this time and even kind of where we were in 2017. Now, 2017 and 2019 played out in very dramatically different ways, whereas 2019 kind of seasonally crept up and then mulled back down 2017 is where we just sort of shot out of a cannon upwards and that's what set us up for the the rates that we saw in 2018. it'll be remain to be seen I, I don't think given some of the economic pressures being caused by covid that we're going to see a repeat of 2017 but at this point we're only a few pennies away from being at pre-covid levels which again i think speaks to we're more in recovery mode than we are um, in that depressed state and if you go to the next slide what you'll see is that this zooms in on the past two years and you'll see that the three day weight moving average is actually above, considerably above where we were in 2019. So again, there's a lot of ground to cover, but we're seeing some catching up happen. On the reefer side, it's even more positive. We're seeing at a point where we've broken away from 2019 levels, trending more towards 2017. Again, I don't know necessarily when we get into that third quarter-ish timeframe is where 2017 really broke away from the 2019 trend. 
we'll continue to very closely watch it and see if that's going to manifest itself this year in the reefer space. Again, zooming in, you can see us shooting past 2019 on the reefer side with no real signs of letting up. That there's like a hump there, if you will, the seasonal peak for produce somewhere between day 150 and day 190 of the year. That's always been something that's caused a lot of internal debate about whether or not we'll be able to catch that um, and, and keep this momentum up. So we're closely watching to see if we can uh, at least reproduce or hopefully you know, push up towards the $2, $2.05 per mile rates as produce peaks this summer. Um, I think that's probably all that you guys want to hear from me this week. So I will turn it over to Ned to talk about the forecasting models. Thanks, Ken. So uh, we're going to start off with our dry van spaghetti this week. Um, you can see this chart has the blue is the actual transaction rates observed by rate view. And then off to the right, we can see uh, our model suite. We've got rate cast in green. We've got our very short term weighted model in red. And then we have a pair of blended forecasts that kind of mix together the short term and the rate cast view in different uh, proportions in gray and yellow. So you can see that all the models agree on continued rate growth, but there's a lot of disagreement about the level of optimism. Uh, for my money, I think that the rate cast model is probably going to be more accurate than the others going into this week about the, the rate of growth, um, but I'm happy to be surprised. Uh, also, as a note, near the tail end of our forecast period, we're going to be coming up on the uh, seasonal bump. So expect that to start driving long-term for uh, rates up near the tail end of that, that summer bump that you typically see there for, for van. Um, moving forward to reefer, you can see the same structure, the same um, plot, but for reefer rates. Again, the blue is the actual transactions that were observed by rate view. And then on the right, we have our model suite. Here, there's a little bit less agreement. There's a little bit of disagreement um, earlier as opposed to the van rates, but they're all more or less in agreement about up and to the right. It's just more or less a question about the, the degree of optimism. Here, I think the rate cast model is perhaps being just a hair too pessimistic, and I might lean more towards the, the gray or the yellow um, model that of those blended forecasts here. Again, I, I continue to doubt that that red line is gonna get above 215. That's just not happening, um, at least not immediately. Uh, you might be able to see that during the, the typical produce peak that's coming up that's going to be right outside of our forecast window for right now, but it should be pretty soon that we'll, we'll start to see rates growing pretty aggressively based on that uh, forecast peak. And that's about it for our show this week. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and uh, remind everybody that they can get their updates at dat.com slash COVID-19. That's dat.com slash COVID-19. COVID, C-O-V-I-D hyphen 19, uh, if you want a more text-based format. Um, if you have any questions, please do email us at askiq at dat.com. That's A-S-K-I-Q at dat.com. We love to get questions. We love to answer questions, some questions more than others, but uh, we really like hearing from our listeners and, uh, and people out in the freight industry. Um, it's nice to, to have all different kinds of perspectives on what's going on from the very big to the very small. Uh, next week, we'll be back with our new update, uh, including a special guest, which I'm looking forward to. Oh, and of course, I forgot one extra benefit you can get by emailing our Ask IQ inbox, and that is our top 50 lanes report. We have our top 50 lanes, uh, both short-term historicals and short-term forecasts for free. Uh, that you can get by emailing askiq at dat.com and you will get uh, that report every single day hot and fresh into your inbox. Um, I want to thank everybody for continuing to listen in and I hope that uh, as things start opening up that uh, everything goes more or less back to normalcy. That would be lovely. All right, take care everybody.